The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome everyone to the EV 101 and Testimonials webinar. This is the first installment in the Wisconsin Virtual Electric Series presented in partnership with Renew Wisconsin and Wisconsin Clean Cities. Today you'll be hearing from industry experts, including Wisconsin Clean City Zone Executive Director Lori Lissick and Renew Wisconsin's Program Manager Jane McCurry on the latest in EV trends and opportunities for personal vehicle ownership. You'll then hear firsthand from the City of Madison as they show off their electric vehicle fleet. And finally, we'll hear from electric vehicle owners as they show off their rides in our virtual vehicle testimonials videos. We also hope that you will join us in some of our upcoming webinars in the Wisconsin Virtual Electric Series. On August 5th, we are hosting the Medium and Heavy Duty Vehicles webinar. On September 2nd, we are hosting the Medium, we are hosting the Autonomous Vehicles webinar. And finally, on September 30th, we're hosting the last installment in the series during National Drive Electric Week which will be our local utilities and infrastructure webinar. We hope to have you join us for these upcoming webinars. Before I introduce our first speaker, I'd like to launch a poll so we can gauge our audience and who's with us today. So the first poll is, what is your involvement with EVs? So please choose um, whichever one applies to you, and then we'll go ahead and check out the results after. The results are coming in. We have about 75% voted, so please keep voting. All right, that looks like about everybody's voted. So it looks like the yeah. results indicate that most folks are interested in purchasing an EV, but the rest are pretty close. So we're glad to have a wide variety of folks with us today. We plan to address many of your questions related to electric vehicles during the presentations but we'll also be hosting a live Q&A session at the end with both our presenters. So please type in your questions during the presentation at any time so we can get to those at the end. Now I'd like to go ahead and introduce our first speaker, Jane McCurry, Program Manager with Renew Wisconsin. We're so excited to have Jane with us today. Welcome, Jane. Thanks so much, Kelly, and we're so excited to be partnering with Clean Cities on this webinar series. As Kelly mentioned, I'm the Electric Vehicles Program Manager for Renew Wisconsin. Renew is a nonprofit organization based in Madison. Uh, working statewide to promote all forms of renewable energy in addition to electric transportation. Kelly, can you move to the next slide for me? Thanks. We are uh, really excited to be working on transportation because when we think holistically about how Wisconsin uses energy, uh, more than 25% of Wisconsin's energy consumption goes toward powering our vehicles. Um, so it's a ton of energy that we're using just to get around and that's primarily uh, fossil fuel energy and so it's a huge opportunity for the state to transition to cleaner homegrown energy sources if we electrify our transportation. Not only is this an environmental opportunity, but it's also a really large security and financial opportunity. Um, Wisconsin is spending over eight billions of $8 billion every single year just on oil and gas. Um, and all of that is coming from outside the state. So it's a huge opportunity to keep our local energy dollars local. So we're gonna start in on our EV 101. There are two kinds of vehicles that I consider to be electric. 
both of these vehicles plug into the wall. So you have your plug-in hybrid and those use uh, battery storage that's um, refueled from electricity from the grid in addition to having a gas engine. Then you have your battery electric vehicles, which don't use gasoline at all. So they are purely powered by just electricity that they are pulling from the grid by recharging. So how do you charge these vehicles? It can really be as simple as just plugging into a wall outlet. We call that level one charging. You can plug your car in just like you plug your laptop or your cell phone or any other appliance into your regular 110 volt wall outlet. If you wanna get a little bit faster charge, uh, you can use what we call a level two charger and that uses a 240 volt outlet, which is the same as some of your larger home appliances like your clothes dryer. Uh, and that can add over 20 miles of charge to your battery per hour. So level two chargers are typically um, used outside grocery stores or retailers, you could see them, um, or people with battery electric cars uh, tend to get level two chargers put in their garage so that they can really, really easily charge their car up overnight. The last kind of charging is called DC fast charging. Some call this level three charging. And that is super, super quick, tons and tons of power all at once going into your vehicle battery. It can be over 440 volts of power. Um, so we're talking, you know, charging an entire car's battery in less than an hour. So those are the chargers that you wanna stop at at road trips. Um, it's typically not how people are recharging their car on a day-to-day -day basis, um, but that DC fast charging is they're going on a longer trip, um, you know, say further than what your car's battery is. So I like to say, you charge your car like you charge your phone, primarily happening at home overnight. So having access to charging wherever you park your car overnight is really going to be the easiest way um, to, to charge your car. And then you can wake up with a full battery every single day and you don't really need to worry about that public charging infrastructure. Most new cars today come with over 200 miles of range. Um, so again, it's really easy just to keep your car charged at home and not have to worry so much about charging in public. There are quite a few electric vehicles that are available in Wisconsin today um, from brands that we all know and love. You can get BMWs and Volvos and Chevys and Fords and whatever your brand of choice is, they most likely have an electric vehicle that is available to you in Wisconsin. Um, the majority of uh, electric vehicles on the market right now are plug-in hybrids, but there are nine full battery electric vehicles that are available today in Wisconsin. And that number is just going to keep going up. So each one of these little cars in this image represents a commitment by an auto manufacturer to produce a new make or model of electric vehicle. So we can see more than 200 new models will be available on the market soon from all of these same brands that we know and love, plus new uh, electric only manufacturers like Tesla and Rivian. Um, so you'll be able to get an electric vehicle in any shape and size that you want from SUVs to pickup trucks, full battery electrics and plug-in hybrids. Um, so it's a really exciting time to be looking at the market and thinking about purchasing an electric vehicle because you'll have tons of options available to you soon. So with that said, we're going to launch our second poll um, and ask why you did or why you're considering purchasing an electric vehicle. Awesome. So it looks like most people said all of the above. Um, they like the environmental benefits, the total cost of ownership savings, um, and environmental benefits was number two. So it's awesome. You know, I'll say the great thing about driving electric is that you don't have to choose just one of those benefits. You can um, you know, you can really take advantage of all of those benefits. They are low cost vehicles, they're low emissions vehicles, 
Um, they can make really great commuter cars and even road trip cars. Um, they're fast, they're quiet, they're high tech. There are loads of reasons that we hear from consumers about why they really enjoy driving their electric vehicle. go into two of those reasons a little bit more. Kelly, if you can flip the slide for me. Um, the first reason is that, well, I guess the first, uh, sorry, I think we're having some technical difficulties. Well, I'd like to talk a little bit more about why electric vehicles are uh, really cost-effective choices. Um, I will say that on the market right now, electric vehicles cost a little bit more upfront. However, you tend to make that money back in um, energy cost savings in addition to maintenance cost savings. There are analyses comparing uh, Toyota Camry to the Tesla Model 3. And over a five year period, it's actually cheaper to own a Tesla Model 3 than any version of the Toyota Camry, just because you're paying so much less for your fuel and so much less in maintenance. Um, electric have far fewer moving parts than gasoline engine cars. Um, so there's just a lot less to go wrong and you never have to get your oil changed, which is pretty nice. Um, so today in Wisconsin, the cost per electric gallon, um, which means you know, however far the average gas car goes per gallon of gas, um, it costs $1.34 to go that far in an electric car. So you're immediately seeing those fuel cost savings. I also get a lot of questions about um, the emissions of electric cars. Um, so today in the US, the average emissions of an electric vehicle is about the equivalent to an 80 mile per gallon car. In Wisconsin, that looks like a little bit closer to 45 miles per gallon just because of our electricity mix. We um, in Wisconsin have a bit more coal on our grid than other states around us, um, which is changing really quickly. So the great news with driving an electric vehicle is that the emissions today are lower than your average gas car, and that number is just going to continue to get better as we add more renewable energy to the grid. You'll see in our testimonials, a few of our drivers talk about that and how they love to be powering their vehicles with the solar on their roof. Um, so that's another great perk of driving a that you can drive on sunshine. Uh, solar power owners are 66% more likely to also own an EV. And so electric vehicles and renewable energy really do go hand in hand and they're transitions that are just going to keep thriving together um, and you know, make Wisconsin a, a cleaner state to live in. So I think now Lori is going to tell us a little bit more about what Clean Cities is up to. And thanks again, Kelly. Yeah, thank you, Jane. Now, Lori Lissick, Executive Director of Wisconsin Clean Cities is up and she's going to talk a little bit more about EVs and infrastructure. Take it away, Lori. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. As Kelly said, I'm Lori Lissick, Executive Director with Wisconsin Clean Cities. And as Jane had mentioned, transportation is a critical aspect of our nation's and our state's energy consumption. Wisconsin Clean Cities as part of the U.S. Department of Energy Clean Cities program focuses on how transportation relates to the priorities of national security, economic growth, affordability, and resiliency. Wisconsin Clean Cities is a fuel neutral technology organization seeking to identify the correct fit for specific applications because as we know, one size does not fit all. And in case you're not familiar with Wisconsin Clean Cities, we're part of the national network of coalitions across the country who through partnerships advance affordable domestic transportation fuels, energy efficient mobility systems, and fuel saving technologies and practices. Through collaborations and partnerships like those with Renew, um, federal agencies, fuel providers, industry associations, equipment manufacturers, and businesses, schools, and municipalities, we have assisted in bringing transportation projects to Wisconsin totaling over $22 million in funding since 2011. I want to talk a little bit about the vehicle infrastructure that's available. And um, if any of you can remember way back to, I believe, February, January, when the Super Bowl was on, um, the ads for the EVs cost an estimated $33.6 million. And that's because automakers are interested in making this investment because they know what customers want. There's currently, as Jane was mentioning, over 40 
plus models on the market with the availability growing not only for consumers but for fleet managers as well with the addition of box trucks delivery trucks transit buses school buses pickup and class 8 trucks and we can't forget our own harley davidson live wire as one manufacturer stated, if you're going to save the planet, you might as well have a good time doing it. So as far as infrastructure, we know that that plays a huge role in the advancement of electric vehicles. Range anxiety or range confidence, which I like to call it, is being addressed um, by numerous organizations. Alternative fuel corridors are being developed across the U.S. and in Wisconsin, Wisconsin Clean Cities is actively developing the I-94 corridor. As Jane mentioned, there are different types of infrastructure, charging infrastructure that's available. So you can see on the screen, we have the home charger on the bottom left. Uh, we also have a level two charger. In the middle, we have a DC fast charger, and this is actually at our opening of the Toma station that is part of our I-94 corridor project. And then on the far right is one of the Tesla chargers, and I'm sure everyone has seen those around. Tesla has their own charging network, and those uh, chargers are only for Tesla vehicles. So as Jane um, so eloquently described all of the different types of charging when you're going on a trip the one in the middle is the dc fast charging and that's what we're focusing on along the corridors kelly's going to launch another poll at this time for you so please take a minute and answer the question for this poll We'll see who gets the best answer. Okay, we have our results. So it looks like 26% more than 250, and that is the correct answer. According to our AFDC energy.gov station locator, there are 272 stations in Wisconsin with over 645 charging outlets. When we conducted in February the EV zone at the Milwaukee Auto Show, the number one question we got was, where do I charge my vehicle? And as Jane had mentioned, most of the charging, according to the US Department of Energy, happens at home. 80% of charging will happen at home. But we want to address that range confidence by having stations available across the state. So this gives you an idea of where the stations are located. Additionally, Wisconsin has $10 million available through the Volkswagen settlement, which is being developed through the Department of Administration to enhance the EV charging in Wisconsin. And we anticipate that additional funding opportunities um, may become available through different sources. And we actually, from Wisconsin Clean Cities, have submitted several applications to the Department of Energy to help to enhance our charging efforts throughout the state. Through grant funds, Wisconsin Clean Cities has successfully developed several programs related to EV infrastructure and deployment. The Midwest Evolve program served a fabulous opportunity to educate consumers and businesses, and I'm sure maybe some of you on the, the call today may have participated in some of our events and our numerous ride and drives that were held across the Midwest. Through this program, we also developed the Evolution Tool, which is available on our website, to assist consumers in making informed decisions regarding the purchase of EVs. Core development is occurring throughout the country, and we are specifically working on developing the I-94 corridor, and those are the pictures in the middle of the screen. The corridor covers a 1,500-mile range from Billings, Montana to Port Huron, Michigan, and the proposed plan for the corridor is to, de to deploy 60 natural gas Class 8 vehicles, of which Wisconsin Clean Cities was able to secure $800,000 for deployment of those vehicles and 15 alternative fueling um, stations. This includes two natural gas and 12 DC fast charging stations to fill fueling gaps along the corridor. Collaboration has been very important with this project as we continue to develop that. And additionally, the Wisconsin DOT has applied for alternative fuel designation for additional corridors in the state. Signage has become a big issue, and um, in the middle of the screen is a picture of some of the signage that's being developed along the corridor. 
um, that's going to help to identify these corridors so consumers traveling the corridors will know that they'll be able to fuel their alternative fuel vehicles along specified corridors throughout the country. Focusing on the EV development of this project to date, we have deployed three fast chargers. The first, which was in Toma, and another in Moorhead was Minnesota, and we have a new one that is, uh, has opened in Hudson, Wisconsin. We were to have a celebration of that in April, but due to COVID, that has been uh, delayed. However, the station is open in Hudson, so we're very excited about how this corridor is developing. The development of the Volkswagen electric vehicle charging station project could assist in helping to fill some gaps that are along this corridor. And we're specifically looking at filling a gap in the Wisconsin Dells area and then getting signage up so that everyone can know um, that the corridor is complete and is available to fuel your alternative fuel vehicles. As one who has driven up with, through Wisconsin in a fully electric vehicle, I can attest that it is not a journey without barriers, but we're getting better. And that's what's exciting about the development of all of these projects. During the first cycle of Electrify America, which is part of the Volkswagen settlement for the um, United States, um, they had made four investments in DC fast chargers in Wisconsin. And on the bottom of the screen to the right, you'll see one of those stations. Um, there was a new installation that was recently put in in November in West Milwaukee, and it was one of the largest installations in the nation's made through Electrify America. Cycle three of the national outreach process is scheduled for later this year. Okay, and next slide. So in, a, um, in addressing some of the barriers affiliated with uh, electric vehicles in Wisconsin, gathering data um, has been a real challenge for the organizations that are trying to do this. Um, several of the different sites that we use to address how many vehicles are available in the um, state have different numbers that are available, but we are into, we um, estimate that there are between nine to 10,000 battery electric and plug-in hybrid electric vehicles in Wisconsin. But this is something that we are working on addressing um, with some different organizations and through the U.S. Department of Energy. Okay, next slide. And I think that it would be important to notice, to talk about where we're at right now, because I'm sure this is on the mind of many people. Um, right now we're in the middle of a pandemic and these are uncertain times for all of us. And we're wondering how the pandemic will hurt the growth or um, maybe stall the growth of EVs and, and what's gonna happen next and how will COVID affect our businesses? On the automotive supply side, it's not only about the factories producing the vehicles, but also about the thousands of part suppliers. So these are things that we are looking at and are, are talking about um, throughout the industry and with the other coalitions across the country. The predictions are all over the map. We know that we're gonna need vehicles. We know that we're gonna need consumers that are ready to buy those vehicles. But due to the uncertain course of the pandemic, time is just going to, to be the telltale sign of what's gonna happen. And we really need to think about not getting back to normal, but maybe getting back to better. And that's what we're gonna focus on as we move forward with developing, developing the EV infrastructure and introducing new vehicles um, throughout the state. So what's next? Next slide, please, Kelly. It's important that we all stay connected. Um, staying connected with Clean City, staying connected with Renew, staying connected with the other organizations that are supporting the EV industry throughout the state. Also, um, there are federal tax credits and that are available for the purchase of electric vehicles. And we have that information available on our website um, showing the vehicles that are available and the tax credits affiliated with each individual vehicle. So that can help you as a consumer in making those um, informed decisions of purchasing an electric vehicle. We're also anticipating that other in incentive programs may become available um, in the future. Additionally, again, the development of the Wisconsin Volkswagen infrastructure program will play a huge role in the development and um, the deployment of EVs in Wisconsin. So we're very excited about that. And then finally, you need to uh, check with your local utilities and see what types of programs that they have and what they're offering. Um, each of the utilities in the state um, has uh, programs that are available and can help you and assist you in purchasing your electric vehicle, getting your in-home charging um, infrastructure in place if you um, would like that, or helping you to make those decisions. So we're all together working to get Wisconsin back to better. 
The program supported by Wisconsin Clean Cities and its members support domestic fuels, thereby strengthening our nation's security and reducing dependence on imported oil, improving air quality, and supporting local jobs and local economy. Using domestic transportation fuels like electricity are all produced and distributed in the United States, which means they support jobs and that the revenue they generate support our nation's economy. Technology such as electric vehicles also reduce dependence on imported oil and support energy independence, as do alternative energy sources such as wind and solar. Because transportation accounts for nearly 75% of the total U.S. petroleum consumption, using these different alternative fuels can have a direct impact. In short, you're seeing a small celebration of our energy independence every time you see an alternative fuel vehicle on the road and you're seeing one less vehicle dependent on imported oil for operation. So let's keep moving forward to ensure we can celebrate Independence Day every day by doing our part and supporting this industry. Thank you so much and we look forward to working with you and I'll turn it back over to Kelly now. Thank you, Lori, for sharing your insight on electric vehicles and infrastructure. We really appreciate that. Remember that both Lori and Jane will be available for the Q&A session afterwards. We already have some great questions coming in, so please keep them coming. A special thank you to Madison Gas and Electric for an outstanding video highlighting the city of Madison's electric fleet. Both Renew Wisconsin and Wisconsin Clean Cities work closely with MG&E and the City of Madison, so we are thrilled to show this video with you all today. So bear with us as we try and play this video for you all. No audio. I think EVs are great. We're going to have at least 30 by next year. We'll be the largest electric fleet in the state of Wisconsin. One electric car serves as a pool vehicle, so employees have a chance to try the new technology. Change is scary, right? Park planner Sarah Close likes change. I rent the bolt quite often. <laughs> I'll go out in the park several times a week. I like the feel of the drive. It's very quiet. It's very easy to use. They're nice, snappy little cars. Costs less to maintain, less downtime. There's no engine oil. My department spends hours and hours every day in oils. It doesn't have all those internal parts causing heat and friction. These vehicles are designed to be robust. The Chevy Bolt, they have a range of almost 240 miles. You can go to Milwaukee and back. That's further than 99% of our city employees need and they cost less to operate. It's much cheaper to charge your electric car than it is to buy gas. So we're investing more upfront to get the savings in a few years of owning that vehicle. We're going to be making our money back. My intention is to keep investing in this technology and in the next few years, there'll be a lot more options. We're looking at electric pickup trucks and electric box trucks. The city is buying three buses in 2020 that'll be all electric. It's a good move forward. Electric vehicles reduce emissions significantly. We will improve local air quality, which should be better for the community's health. Part of doing this is to expose other fleets to technology and show that it works. They see the city's going in this direction. Madison is pretty darn progressive as a city. So I feel like it would be a good idea for us to stay on the forefront of greener or more efficient new tech. We know that is a bit glitchy, but the video or the audio is fine. So that's really what we wanted you to hear anyways. We will have the videos on both Renew and Wisconsin Clean Cities websites as well. So feel free to go to that and you'll be able to see the full version and it should not be glitchy 
Um, same with the vehicle testimonials, which we're about to play now. Um, so we're excited to show you some EV testimonials from local EV drivers. And we do have some of the local EV drivers that joined us today that sent in their videos. So we wanna just have a special thank you for sending in those videos. We really do appreciate it. And like I said, they'll be up on our website. So um, we will try playing it now, but if the audio um, and visual don't work out just perfectly, we will have them up on our site. So feel free to check it out then. Hi, my name's Roger, and I'm gonna take you for a ride in my Chevy Bolt, all electric. I live in Bayfield, retired with my wife, Susan, and we drive about, pre-COVID, we drove about 20,000 miles a year, but it's very comfortable. I carry two Labradors and a lot of uh, other gear in here and never have a problem. This car gets really good gas mileage in terms of electricity. It gets about 107 miles per gallon E, which is basically just computing the difference between electricity and the price of gas and coming up with an equivalent miles per gallon. A little bit about this car, it's a hatchback and uh, it handles really well. It handle, I drive it all year round. Last winter we had uh, about 120 inches of snow. The bottom of it is all like a sled. The battery's at the bottom. And in the front, you have a small electric motor and all the uh, electronics that convert the, the analog to DC and back again. And it has uh, a good air conditioning and heating system that's run on separate cooling systems. It has a cooling system that just takes care of the battery itself uh, because the battery needs an optimal temperature to operate. This particular corner I just went around in the winter it's going around to the right. It's a little slippery. This has this car has a uh, thing called drive-by-wire. It also has a little lever right here that controls the re regeneration of the. So going downhill, I can end up with more miles than I started out with on the top of the hill. And when I go up, I'll use that extra to generate. I like the car. I drive it a lot. This is the area I live in right here. It's Bayfield, and we've got a lot of hills and it works much better than a gasoline car like my grandfather said once you go elect once you once you get a chrysler you don't want a horse anymore i think the analogy falls through with this electrics you know that it quickly becomes your primary car it's not a second car but uh anyway thanks for listening have a great day my name is dave my wife marianne and i live in madison we both drive EVs. Marianne drives a Tesla Model 3, and I drive a Model S. We both drive EVs because, well, we want to keep the air clean, we want to keep the CO2 levels low, but also because they're really easy to maintain and uh, a lot of fun to drive. Um, but to keep, be sure that our EVs were powered with clean energy, about 12 years ago, we started putting solar panels on our roof, first on the south side and then on the west side. And now we're making about seven megawatt hours per year, which is about twice what we need to charge the cars. But of course we charge the cars at night and we make the energy during the day. So we decided that we would get storage batteries for the house and I'll show them to you, go along. So these are our power wall storage batteries. Uh, they were installed by Arch Electric just a few months ago. Together, they store 27 kilowatt hours of electricity. That works out to about 80 miles of range on our cars. So at night time, we use them to charge the cars and to run the house. On most days, so we still need to buy some energy from energy and e but on really good sunny days, we can actually power the house with our own energy for the entire day, uh, day and night, and sometimes even sell a little bit back to 
So let's go take a look at the EVs. So these are our EVs. This is the Model S and this is the Model 3. They look a lot alike except for colors. And you can very easily with both of them. Now, what surprised me was you can't put a roof rack on the solid roof. So if you want a roof rack, get the glass roof, you get it on either car. Now I'll show you the charging setup we have here. So it's not a wall charger, it's just a 200 volt outlet. It costs $400 to get it installed. I know it comes along the ceiling here. The cable came with the car. We just bring up some nice hooks up here to hold. And the cars control the charging. So they can set the amperage using, you can set on the car the amperage, the time, and I can call the whole thing on my Tesla app, and that includes the batteries and solar panels too. So it's a, a very simple setup. Both cars have about um, 300 miles of range in the summer, 200 in the winter. So we don't need to charge them every day. We just charge on alternate days. We just pass the cable back and forth. Um, they both wheel drive, and they handle great in the snow. It's taken us uh, about 12 years to set this all up, and uh, my advice for you is uh, get started on your own system today. Hi, I'm Lee. I live in Sun Prairie, and I drive a Tesla Model 3. It's a long-range battery vehicle, and it also uh, has a real drive. Why do you drive electric? I drive electric because electric vehicles are much more efficient than internal combustion engine vehicles. For example, this Tesla Model 3 has a 95% efficient electric motor as compared to an internal combustion engine, which is 20 or 30% efficient. That means that a lot more of the energy that I buy from my electric vehicle is used to move the car forward instead of losing much of that energy to produce heat, which is what happens with an internal combustion engine vehicle. It only costs three or four cents a mile to buy the electricity to run this Model 3. There are no uh, dirty exhaust fumes coming from the vehicle, and I can refuel by plugging in in my garage, so there's no need to visit a gas station and get exposed to any nasty viruses on surfaces there. What are some of the favorite things about your vehicle? Well, it has a great navigation system where you can zoom in to get the close de up details, or you can zoom out to get um, an overall view of where you're going. And also, it'll show you where all the charging stations are in your area. Um, it has a very neat um, HVAC system where I can use my fingers to adjust uh, exactly where I want the uh, airflow to go. Also, it has Slacker Radio. Tesla gives you four years of subscription to Slacker Radio when you buy the car. And all I have to do is press this microphone button and say what song I'd like for it to play. It'll play anything I want. What's it like to drive electric in your area? It's very easy to drive electric in the Madison area. Madison alone has over 50 charging stations. And most of them are close to places where you can grab dinner or a snack. And uh, uh, these charging stations have anywhere from a 110 volt wall outlet all the way up to a Tesla supercharger where I could get an 80% charge on this Tesla model in 30 minutes. Also, um, I don't really need to use those charging stations, of course, because this Tesla Model 3 has a 310 mile range. So those charging stations obviously will be for people that are driving through from, from much farther away. Thanks for listening. Hi, my name is Lisa Eason Bauer and I'm the president of Fusion Marketing. This is Bunny, my all electric Nissan Leaf vehicle. Now, I've had Bunny since 2012. This month, Bunny is actually seven years old. Wow, seven year old electric Nissan Leaf, pretty amazing, right? Hi, I'm Matthew Kruger, owner of this 2013 Tesla Model S and also a 2013 Chevy Volt plug-in hybrid. They're both great cars. We enjoy driving them and love 
able to drive electric as often as possible. The only downside to the Volt is it is a plug-in hybrid, so it is both uh, electric and gas. Uh, the range extender is great, but love being able to drive the Tesla and go all electric and make use of the supercharger networks, uh, which makes a road trip fantastic. We can go for 200 miles, 180 to 200 miles, stop for 25 to 30 minutes to charge, stretch our legs, get something to drink, and we're back on the road in 30 minutes with 80% uh, charge, and we go another 175 to 190 miles. So it's a great road trip car. The kids love it. Our two young kids will only want to ride in the Tesla, and it's a little bit larger car than our Volt. is a big part of it. I love the smooth feeling of easy acceleration and it's a well put together car as a I love the safety factors of Tesla's. Uh, their safety ratings, um, they broke the safety rating and they, they sc scored the highest score ever. And uh, the, the Model S's, I've heard numerous stories of people being in accidents that they shouldn't have walked away from. They did walk away from with minor or no injuries. So they're fabulous cars all the way around. And Earth-friendly vehicles, I enjoy renting them out to people. I've had great conversations and experiences. People ask me, how can you rent out your Tesla to others? And I say, how can I not? I love sharing it um, and having conversations about why others can drive electric, like I'm doing with you here today. So contact me at earthfriendlyvehicles at gmail.com or www.earthfriendlyvehicles.com. And I'd love to have a conversation with you about why you can drive electric today as well. Hi, my name's Jim. And I drive electric. Hi, my name's Jim. And I ride electric. Hi, my name's Jim. And I drive electric. My lawnmower is a Cup Cadet RZT-S zero electric mower. It has four electric motors, one for each drive wheel and one for each blade in the mowing deck. I like the convenience of an electric lawnmower. No running around for gasoline or splashing and pouring it into the tank. I just plug it in when I'm done and it will be ready to go when I need it next time. A full charge easily mows my whole lawn and then some. Because few lawnmowers have reasonable emission controls, an hour using an electric mower is said to be the end of taking 11 cars off the road. I ride a zero electric motorcycle. With few moving parts, an electric motorcycle is very low maintenance. Zero motorcycles are made in Santa Cruz, California, and they have a dealer network all over the world. Most people will really enjoy the smooth power and easy operation of an electric motorcycle. The power band is more uniform than an internal combustion engine, and with a full charge, I can easily go 90 miles using an electric motorcycle. My ideal commute. The slight whine of the motor, the sound of wind, and other traffic allows me to focus on the ride to enjoy the journey and to keep charging on. We just want to give another quick shout out to all of our local EV owners who shared those wonderful videos with us. We're so appreciative of those. Um, and now it's time for the Q&A session. So I'd like to re-welcome back Lori and Jane for our Q&A session. So please keep typing in your questions. We have a lot of great ones already. So Jane, I'll throw you the first question. How much does it cost to use a charging station? 
Yeah, that's a great question. So in my presentation, I talked about what it would cost to fuel your car at home, um, an electric vehicle, and that was closer to about a dollar forty per gallon. In public, you typically pay for those stations as well. Um, and you pay by the time period that you're plugged in. So typically per minute that you're plugged into those stations. Um, and that cost can vary whether it's a level two station or a DC fast charger. Um, and sometimes they're even free. So the cost varies quite a bit. Um, I'll say I'm still cheaper than paying for gas. Um, for example, I drove um, my car. I have a Tesla Model 3. I drove it from Madison, Wisconsin to Detroit and it cost $15 to make that trip. So it's it's still really inexpensive, um, but the cost varies um, depending on where you plug in. Perfect, thank you. Lori, did you have anything to add to that? No, I think Jane did a great answer in that. <laughs> okay, perfect. Lori, I'll throw you this next question. What would you tell someone who is interested in purchasing an EV but isn't sure if they want to make the leap just yet? Well, I think it's um, when you're first looking at purchasing an EV, you have to really look and see, make sure that it's going to work with your lifestyle. Um, we do have the Evolution tool, which is available on our website, which you can actually go in and answer questions that will help you in making that decision and um, will help you to compare cost and to help you decide what type of vehicle you're looking for. Um, but I think it's important to do test drives and, and get out there and really um, try the vehicle and talk to other EV owners and connect um, with groups like us with Renew where we can provide you with some of that insight and some of those questions. Um, driving an EV is great and I think until you actually get behind the wheel and actually experience it for yourself, you're not going to really know if it's the right vehicle for you. So um, being able to um, really experience the ride and the drive um, will help you in making those decisions. But just um, being educated and making a, um, an informed decision. And we have lots of tools and information that is available to you through the U.S. Department of Energy that can assist you in, in those decisions. Jane, do you have anything else? No, I think that's great. Um, you know, I think there are a number of reasons that people drive electric vehicles, like we heard in those testimonials. So talking to people who currently drive electric and learning why they chose that and how it fits into their life can help you answer that question for yourself. Perfect, Jane, this next one is for you. What is the difference in time to charge an EV with the three different charging types, 110, 220, DC fast? Yeah, that's a good question. So I'm gonna answer it in miles added to the battery per hour. Uh, because vehicles have different ranges and so the time will vary based on what vehicle you drive. But if you plug into a regular level one, so your regular you know, 110, 120 volt outlet, um, you're going to add about five miles of range per hour that your car is plugged in. Uh, so in a plug-in hybrid vehicle that has about a 50 mile range, your 110 outlet will work great for you to charge your car overnight. Um, and with a level two charger you can add 20 to 30 miles of range per hour so that means you can charge a battery electric vehicle really easily overnight you can plug in for a few hours um, while you're at work or at the grocery store and kind of top off get an extra 20 40 60 miles on your battery and dc fast chargers can add um, upwards of 200 300 miles per hour um, so they're really quick and can charge your car from almost empty to almost full in usually less than an hour. Perfect, thank you. So this one goes out to either of you. I'm seeing a lot of questions regarding driving in colder weather that we have in Wisconsin and how does that work with the EVs with snow and colder temperatures? Well, I think um, those are things that the battery manufacturers are working on, and I think it's gotten a lot better over the years. And we're seeing, um, you will see some degradation um, driving in the colder temperatures, but those are things that you need to plan for as you're planning your trips and um, planning where you're driving. But like I said, we are seeing um, a great influx in um, improvements in the batteries. And so um, it's not as, um, Degradation is not as much as it was, I would say, in some of the earlier models of EVs that we have seen. 
Yep, absolutely. And I'll add that gas cars are also less efficient in cold temperatures. It's just hard to operate heavy machinery when it's really cold out. Um, so you do see that same kind of range reduction in your gas cars, just a little bit harder to notice because you're not thinking about it as much like you are in an electric vehicle. Um, you know, we heard from Roger in our testimonials who lives up in Bayfield and said he drove through feet and feet of snow and it, it gets really cold in Wisconsin. So people are doing it. Um, and like Lori said, it is the technology, it, it's improving really quickly. So it's getting easier and easier all the time. And we are getting a lot of questions about the recording of this webinar. This will be available on both of our websites tomorrow as well. Um, so feel free to watch it. The next question is, a lot of the marketing for EV seems to be toward environmentalists or higher level um, income. What demographics do you see actually buying EVs and what demographics are showing increased interest? That, that could go to either of you. A great question. I think increasingly EVs are for everyone. Um, there are a lot of electric vehicle models that are luxury vehicles and are for, you know, the more wealthy people on our country. And there are electric vehicles that you can use that are really inexpensive and great commuter cars, good family cars. Um, so, you know, in my perspective, the electric vehicle market is really opening up so that it's accessible to more and more people and you don't have to be um, you know, super high tech or super wealthy to own an electric vehicle. Um, you know, they, they make really great cars for everyone. And I'll just add to the secondary market is becoming um, increasingly um, affordable for people to be, to step into that first electric vehicle. So um, we have a lot of electric vehicles that maybe have been out on a lease and are now coming back to the dealer. So picking up a used um, electric vehicle makes a great option and there's still plenty of um, great miles left on those batteries, you know, even after three years of a lease. So um, picking them up in the secondary market is also um, you know, very viable for many people that want to, you know, dip their toe into the electric vehicle arena. Great. I'm seeing a lot of questions here about getting your electric car serviced. Um, can one of you touch on the, the maintenance that goes into the electric vehicles and then if you can service your car at a standard auto shop? Yeah, so there isn't a ton of maintenance that electric vehicles need. Um, I've had an EV for a year and I've replaced the windshield wiper fluid and that's really all I've done to be honest. Um, but there are um, specific mechanics that get uh, trained in how to operate on um, electric vehicles and so you know, all of your dealerships um, sh should have that training or you can call them and ask if, if they do service electric vehicles. Um, but in my experience, it's really only if something goes wrong, there isn't a ton of regular maintenance on them. And we did just have a new Tesla service center that opened in the Milwaukee area. So that's exciting too, to have that in, in Wisconsin now as well. And then Jane, this question's for you. How did the expectation differ from the reality when you first got your EV? Can you talk a little bit more about your experience with your EV? Sure. I love driving my car. Um, I drive a lot for work going around the state um, and I haven't had really any trouble getting around the state in my car. Um, I wasn't expecting to love like some of the more high tech features as much. It feels really silly to go back and drive a gas car to me now, uh, which I really wasn't expecting. I, I just feel like after having the experience of driving a high tech vehicle, um, for example, I, I don't have like a, a key fob. I just walk up and it knows that it's me and lets me in the car. Um, I don't know that I could go back to driving a gas car and feeling kind of the, the inefficiencies and the lag when you step on the pedal. Um, so it's definitely been the right choice for me and it's, um, it's made my life better driving electric. We are also getting a lot of questions regarding the utilities. Um, we are, remember that we're doing that utilities webinar on September 30th um, that will have local Wisconsin utilities on it so they can answer questions about vehicle to grid or some of the rebates you're asking specifically um, from your local utility. 
Um, Lori, this one can go to you. Can you touch on the varying cost levels between the different EVs and what that looks like, what the range of that looks like? Sure. Well, um, we do have a listing of all of the EVs that are available in the Midwest market. It is on our website under the um, Midwest Evolve program. Um, we just updated it as of June, and it does list all of the different costs for each of the EVs, but the EVs can vary from, you know, the BMWs, the 147,000, um, to, you know, like a, a Nissan Leaf, which is um, right in the mid-range. Um, so they're really, as Jane said, EVs are for everyone, and there is a vehicle probably available for everyone um, in the different price ranges that are out there. I don't know if that's really um, the questions that they were asking, but remember there are the federal tax credits too that are available that can help to make those vehicles a little more um, accessible to you as well. And Lori, I am seeing a few more questions asking you to repeat the amount of tax credits and how long they are in effect for. Could you touch on that again? So each of the uh, manufacturers, they once they reach the 200,000 vehicles, that's when the tax credits go away. So that has also already happened for the Tesla vehicles. There is no more tax credits. Um, so the tax credits range from $7,500, and then it's um, based on the battery size of the of the vehicle. So um, the credits go down from there. But for a fully electric vehicle, it's a $7,500 um, tax credit, and then it's different for some of the other vehicles and they're each individual. So um, I would encourage you to go on our website, go under the Midwest Evolve program and click on that link and then that will show you. It's also on um, the uh, U.S. Department, the uh, IRS website I think also has that information too on the different tax credits that are available for each individual vehicle. And there are also tax credits available through the end of the year on the installation of the charging stations. Um, I stuck a link to um, a renew blog post on that in the question box. Um, so you can get up to 30% of the cost of installing a charging station back um, mm -hmm. through the end of this year. And we're anticipating that there's going to be other incentives that are going to come out uh, maybe from the federal government side of things. Um, you know, we can only go by historically what we have been in, and we are in uncertain times right now, but in order to get the economy moving forward, um, we're anticipating that perhaps there will be some other incentives that come out. Um, so just stay tuned and stay connected, as I said, you know, with us so that we can um, help to provide that information to you going forward. Perfect. Well, thank you both for sharing your insight with some of these questions. We are running a little short on time, so we're going to start wrapping it up. But if you have any final thoughts that you would like to add, any conclusions that you'd like to make, that would be great. I'd just like to say thank you for everyone for being on here and for everyone that submitted a video. Um, I think this was a, a really fun way to do um, kind of a virtual ride and drive. I, I miss being out kind of, you know, boots on the ground and seeing everyone. So it's great to virtually see you all and thanks so much for keeping in touch. Yeah, and I'll, I'll just echo Jane's um, sentiments. It's um, been very difficult for us because we're used to being out and about and meeting people and, um, you know, doing, you know, the ride and drives and um, providing education. And this um, has really been a trying time for us. So we're really just trying to um, do the best that we can to continue to provide that education and to help um, you in making those decisions. And we really appreciate you taking your time to, to spend with us today and to learn more about EVs. And we have some great additional webinars coming up in this series and in other series that we'll be doing all throughout the year. Um, hope, we're hoping that it won't be too much longer before we'll be able to get back in person, but um, you know, time is, time is going to tell, but um, just stay, stay in touch with us. And um, if you have any questions, our information is on the screen, please feel free to reach out to us and we will help get your, your questions answered. Um, in the, in the quickest time that we can do that. So thank you and everyone just stay well and stay safe. And let's get back to better. <laughs> thank you everyone for joining us and we hope to see you in our next webinars. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you, Kelly.